at the start of the meeting. Um, but that would be useful. So we're recording, but we're not live. Is, do I understand that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And you're sure there's no legal issues with that? Um, no, because everyone who wants to be here is was in, in filled out speaker slips invited. Okay. All right. Well then, good afternoon, everybody. My name is David McCullough. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. I will call the meeting to order. I've got 1.02 p.m. on my clock here. So thank you for joining us and uh, taking part in this. I think what I'd like to do is just, well, why don't we go ahead and start with you, Suzanne. I think you want to go over a few things real quick for us. Um, good afternoon. I'm Suzanne Seeger, Senior Planner in the Historical Resources Section of Development Services. Today's Historical Resources Board meeting is being conducted under the provisions of Executive Order 2920, which suspends certain requirements of the Ralph M. Brown Act. In the interest of public health and safety, this meeting will be conducted via teleconference. Per the executive order, there will be no members of the public in attendance at this meeting. In lieu of in-person attendance, members of the public may submit their comments online via the Development Services webpage. In addition, this meeting is not being live streamed via the City of San Diego's Public Hearings YouTube channel. However, it will be added to um, the YouTube channel after the meeting. Today, we are using Zoom as our meeting platform. Please note the buttons on your Zoom meeting bar that pop up when, your when you move your mouse. Share screen will enable an applicant to give a presentation, and the microphone is to mute and unmute. Please remember to stay muted when you are not talking and to unmute yourself when you speak. When wanting to participate in a discussion, please virtually raise your hand and Chair McCullough will call on you in the order entered. Please refrain from using the meeting chat in order to comply with the Brown Act. Thank you. All right, thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and take the roll call and uh, I just wanna remind everybody to unmute yourself as I go through this. The reason why we do this uh, verbally is so we can get on the recording. So I'm gonna start off with uh, Board Member Hutter. Here. Board Member Coyle. Here. Board Member Bowen. Here. Board Member Cordelion. Here. Board Member Harleman. Here. Board Member Pittman. Here. Board Member Stankowski. Here. Board Member Winter, is uh, Matthew on yet? I'm here. You. Oh, okay, great. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, Board Member Woods. Here. Okay, so we have everybody present. And uh, so I just wanna also mention that also joining us today, both virtually and in person, our city staff including Program Manager Anna McPherson, Development Project Manager Kelly Stonko, uh, Deputy City Attorney Lindsay Sebastian, Historical Resources Staff Members Emma Haggerty, Emma Tierney, Megan Basic, Leah Koleski, and Alvin Lynn, as well as our Hearing Support Staff Member Sheila Santos. So uh, with that, I just wanna also mention briefly that Item three on our agenda today is going to be continued, I believe, you know, due to, I'm sorry, go ahead. Chair McCullough, the item, the, the um, Walter and Judith Monk House yes. is being sent back to staff due to a noticing issue, um, which was brought to our attention um, just yesterday. So the item okay. will not be discussed today because it, it cannot be discussed because of the noticing discrepancy. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Mm -hmm. And so let's just go ahead and then move on to the approval of the minutes for March 25th, 2021. Is there anybody that would be willing to propose a motion? Mr. Chair? Okay. Yes, Ms. Coyle. Uh, yeah, I would propose um, to move the minutes with one uh, correction, which is the typo on page six for motion one. It should read Mission Hills not Missions Hills. Otherwise, okay. that minor correction, I would move the minutes. Okay, thank you. That's been very thorough. So we appreciate that. Any, uh, a second? I'll second. I'll, I'll second, okay. Okay, thank you, Ms. Harleman. You have a second, any discussion? Okay, so I'll call the vote, starting with Board Member Hutter. Aye. Board Member Coyle. Aye. Board Member Bowen. 
Aye. Board Member Corleone? Aye. Board Member Harleman? Aye. Board Member Pittman? Yes. Board Member Stankowski? Aye. Board Member Winter? Aye. Board Member Woods? Aye. That's a yes for me, so that's unanimous. Moving on to the non-agenda public comments. These are issues within the jurisdiction of the Historical Resource Board not previously heard or on the agenda. And uh, if there's anybody that's interested in speaking, you have three minutes to do so. Do you have any non-agenda public comments? Do we have one? Oh, well, um, um, it looks like our city attorney, Lindsay Sebastian, has her hand raised. Um, if you want to um, see what she wants to say, Chair McCollum. Okay, yes, please, Mrs. Sebastian, go right ahead. Hi, thanks. Good, good afternoon, everyone. Um, this is a Deputy City Attorney, Lindsay Sebastian. Um, I just want to make sure, can we make an announcement that um, public callers can join the meeting via Zoom or call in? And I believe that uh, information is and link is on the agenda that's posted. Thank you. Okay. So did everybody get that? You can either join via the internet or you can call in as well. That information is on the agenda. So uh, either way works just fine. Any other public comments? And what I would suggest is just if they raise your hand button there, if you're interested in making a comment right now, I'll just give a minute or two or sure. yes. Chair McCullough, um, Ms. Santos just handed me the phone number, so I'm gonna gonna read it out loud. It's one six six nine two five four five two five two. Okay, is that person available? Can you let us know whether or not you're present? And by the way, oh no, Chair McCullough, that's um, to call in if you're an interested member of the public. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, I don't see any hands. So I'm gonna go ahead and then move on to the next item on our agenda. And that would be administrative items. And we'll start with Board Administrative Matters and General Information and General Information. Ms. Seeger, do you have some general information for us? Um, yes, um, prior to today's meeting, the board members have been emailed correspondence for item the three, the Monk um, House, Walter and Judith Monk House, revised resolution for item seven, the Weston and Frida Hicks Spec House, the revised staff report and resolution for item four, the Paul and Nellie McCoy Speculation House number three, um, the request for a continuance for item three, the, the Monk House, and the HRB criteria guidelines and the motions and findings form for historical designation. Okay, thank you. And are there any general board member comments at this moment? Ms. Stankowski, you, something you wanted to? Um, I remember seeing something in the email that the Vulcan bathhouse was also going to be continued. Yes, um, we're gonna get to that in a, in a couple of minutes. Okay. Thank you though. Um, I do have a question with all of your um, historical minds present. Does anyone know of a history of the Horton Plaza development? I have a relative in the UK who we visited when it first opened and she'd like to know a little bit more about, you know, what's going on with it. Does anybody know of anything? Well, All right, thank you then. Horton Plaza has basically been, been torn down. <laughs> and, I know, uh, but it's, it's kind of sad, but I wanted to. Anyway, there's uh, actually unfortunately, a, uh, it was underneath the, the historic uh, time frame, and so it was not something that we had a uh, purview over, unfortunately. But um, it looked like somebody else was about to say something. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, this is Matt. Um, there is a, uh, for interested parties, there's a, I'm looking up on my calendar right now. There is a, something next week, next Thursday. Uh, I think it's the Architecture, San Diego Architecture Foundation is going to present what the new plan is. Or the developer is going to, if you're interested in finding out where they're going with the thing. Okay, thank you, Matthew. And I think uh, you said Friends of San Diego Architecture? San Diego Architecture Foundation. So SDAF is, oh, is okay. doing a little yes, thank you. thing on it. I'm not sure you know, the extent of the presentation, but I know it's about that. Yeah, no, thank you. And, um, and if you're really interested in the history, there's a lot of, there's a couple of good books about John Jarity and, and, uh, his, his architecture, and, and that's a big part of it out there. You can probably look them up. 
Yeah, thank you. And I, I know Ms. Coyle, you have your hand up. Uh, would you like to say something? You're on mute, Ms. Coyle. You might want to contact um, David Marshall. I think that he was um, spearheading some efforts of documentation and possible uh, the, the incorporation of some features into the new design. I'm not sure where all that went, but I think he came before us on that. So David Marshall would probably be a good source for current info. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you, Mr. Pittman. Yeah, could maybe, could we just have a little bit of clarification since it's a public meeting, uh, Chair McCall, I think you made a comment about the age of the building and I'm not quite sure that was a totally accurate comment. So. Could staff perhaps say something? Because, uh, for example, we, we just made historic an architect who built a house about four or five years ago. And we just said that a building that's 30 something plus years old doesn't qualify due to age, which I don't think is quite true. Well, that's um, a good point. Kurt, so Horton Plaza is under 50 years old. It's under 45 years old. So it was not reviewed um, as part of the over 45 year review per the municipal code. Um, the members of the public had a chance to provide information through a report, historical resources research report. Um, we addressed this at the board um, probably about a year and a half or so ago, and there was a memo that went out. So I would um, urge you to reference that if you have any more information, but you know, I don't wanna speak too much on it because I'm not prepared to speak on that today. But that's basic can, information. Can we just clarify though that, that resources do not require to be 50 years old or 45 years old to achieve historic designation? Because I think- Correct, that's correct. Yeah. No, and I believe what I meant to say, if I didn't say this, was that for them to be within our purview, I guess the thing, and even to that point, it, you know, in the case of Horton Plaza, as Ms. Seeger brought up, if the public had brought that before us, then it would have been, it would have become part of our purview, but that didn't happen, unfortunately. So, um, anyways. So that's helpful. Thanks, thanks, David. That, that was, that's what I was looking for. Okay, but uh, that was a good point of clarification, Mr. Pittman. So thank you for pointing that out. Okay, any other comments? Ms. Stankowski, did you have another? Your hand is still up, maybe from before. Or did you have another comment? Okay, all right. Great, then. So we'll go ahead and then move on to uh, com conflict of interest declarations. Are there any con conflicts of interest, ex parte communications, or um, failure to visit the, the designated site. Okay, seeing none. Wow, that's great. So then we'll go ahead and move right down to our staff report, starting with the historical resource section, DSD. Ms. McPherson, did you have a report that you wanted to give? Yes, um, good afternoon. I don't know if you can see me um my zoom link wasn't Do you want me to move correct no that's okay um, they don't need to see me they can hear my voice and um, so i rushed over to the meeting room um after march uh, march's historical resources board hearing an appeal was filed with the city clerk's office for the charles and mary Schaefer residence fred bushman building located at 3951 3957 goldfinch street and 820 university avenue a hearing date has not yet been scheduled this last Tuesday, City Council heard the appeal of the historic designation of the Frederick Thomas House located at 540 Thorn Street, um, HRB number 1381. Members of the City Council voted eight to one to deny the appeal and uphold the historic designation. The appeal of the Florence Hotel Carriage House located at 2004 4th Avenue and the Helen Brader Speck House number one located at 328 Grape Street will be heard at City Council on May the 18th. City staff would like to request that a board member be present at the hearing to speak to the actions of the board. Um, I should note as the board has requested, uh, the maker of the motion for that particular designation was board member Woods. Um, and finally, I regret to inform you that we are losing um, one of our staff members, Gemma Turney. She is joining the County of Sacramento as an assistant planner and will be leaving us um, in a couple of weeks. So this is her last meeting and she will um, not be here after this. Well, I am sorry to hear that, but um, seems like there's a lot of moving going on with people these days. So, uh, okay, thank you very much for that. Historic Preservation Planning Section, Planning Department. Ms. Anko, did you have a report to give? 
Ms. Stunko um, is in communication with me and she informed me that she has nothing to report out today. Okay, thank you. What about the subcommittee uh, policy and archeological and tribal cultural resources in the secret, do you have anything to report? Um, yes, more information on the policy and archeological and tribal cultural resources subcommittees um, can be found on the development services website. And I'm just gonna roll into design assistance. Um, there was no meeting um, for the month of April. However, the re next regularly scheduled meeting will be held on May 5th, 2021 at 4 p.m. Okay, thank you. And requests for continuances of withdrawals? Yeah. Um, as previously stated, um, item three, the, the Monk House, Walter and Judith, Judith Monk House, will be sent back to staff due to a noticing issue, um, and there's no vote on that today. Um, just reminding you guys, um, that's what happened with, with that item. Um, and then staff is requesting a 30-day continuance for item eight, the Vulcan Steam Room and Sauna. Okay. Thank you. So I do believe we need to vote on item eight, the continuance of that item. So, um, excuse uh, me. Hi, yeah. this is Deputy City Attorney Lindsay Sebastian. Sorry to interrupt uh, you, but uh, I just would like to remind you that public comment should be taken on um, any item that is being voted for continuance. Okay. All right. What about item three, being that it's just uh, it's being pulled by staff? Do yeah, item three is not um, on, okay. was not properly noticed, so it cannot be um, discussed or voted upon, and it's not um, being proposed for continuance. Okay, thank you, Ms. Sebastian. So then let's, uh, let's open up if there are any public comments on item eight, it's the Vulcan, Vulcan steam room and sauna. Uh, is there anybody that would like to speak at this time? Please, as I mentioned, just hit the button at the bottom to speak. And I'm gonna give it a minute here. Um, Chair McCullough, just for the record, we didn't receive any new um, public testimony on this um, item prior to the meeting. Okay. All right, great. I'm not seeing hands go up. So are, is there, let's go ahead and um, close public testimony. And then is there anybody on the board that would like to make a motion for either continuance or denial of continuance for item eight. Can I ask a question, which was that during our last meeting, we were having a discussion about continuing to a date certain and ultimately decided on this being the date certain um, at the request, I think of the um, property owner. So, I know we don't have any public comment, but I think Scott Moomjin is on the call. And I, I at least would be curious to know if we're, if the property owner has an issue with the continuance. Uh, okay, yeah, you're saying for item eight, they're asking for a 30 day continuance. Well, st staff is uh, asking for, as, it, as I understand it. Board That's member Hedder, this is Anna McPherson, if I could speak to that. Sure. Um, the, um, it was indicated that there would be new information presented and the board did have some discussion about um, the timing and the ability of staff to be able to respond to that. So the, we did receive information and we have not had time to respond it and we need uh, qualified city staff to review the report that's been presented and that we were unable to get that completed and be able to provide um, a, a report or a memo to the board prior to this meeting. So that is why staff is requesting the continuance so that we have that information vetted and um, can provide you, you know, the most full staff response. Okay. Understood. Yeah. Thank you. And I, I think that, you know, given that it is important to have our staff review things before they come before us, I would support the 30 day continuance. So I'll make a motion for that. Is there anybody that's willing to second that? Yeah, Dr. Woods. Do you have a question, Dr. Woods? <laughs> um, because it's staff requesting this, isn't there this issue of a 90 day limit that we risk losing the possibility? And, oh, um, yeah, isn't Dr. Woods, if I can interrupt, uh, there, can I just ask for a second? Is anybody willing to second my motion? If not, then we'll. But what I'd like to do is keep this in order. We can come to questions here and comments in a second. Anybody willing to second the motion? I'll second it for discussion purposes. Okay, thank you. So staff no. can speak to the question um, yes, that board member Woods has raised. 
Um, yes, I, 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 there is 90 days um, where if, if we do not act on, if the board does not act on this within 90 days um, of it being a re the report originally being presented to the board, um, then we would lose, the board would lose jurisdiction. The um, item being continued um, to next month, that will be the 90 days. So the uh, that is why staff is continuing it for the 30 days. It's still within the time frame that the board can still act on the property. Dr. Woods, does that answer your question? No. Okay. Any further discussion? Can Can I ask again if it's okay if we hear from the Apple or the the owner? Uh, yes, if you have a question, then absolutely. Uh, Mr. Mumjen, would you like to respond or is the owner prepared to respond on behalf of that question? Yes, Mr. Chair, <clears throat> I'd be happy to respond to uh, board member Hutter's question. I, I had not intended to um, address the board on this item, but as far as the property owner is concerned, if staff um, is so inclined to request a continuance of the board, um, we would e express no opinion on that. And um, that would certainly be up to, up to the board to, uh, to grant or to deny the continuance, but we certainly uh, wouldn't uh, oppose it here today. We take, we take no opinion on the continuance. Okay, thank okay. you, Mr. Mugden. You're welcome. Mr. Pittman, thank did you. you have a, a comment? Was that me? Yeah, I just saw you come off of mute, so I thought maybe you had a comment. No, no, Tim, Tim actually asked. I was going to ask if he didn't, so that was it. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, I'm going to call for the vote here, starting with Board Member Hutter. Aye. Board Member Coyle? Aye. Board Member Bowen? Aye. Board Member Corleone? Aye. Board Member Harleman? Aye. Board Member Pittman? Aye. Board Member Sankowski? Aye. Board Member Winter? Aye. Board Member Woods? Aye. And that's a yes for me, so that's unanimous. We'll move that item to the next board hearing. So uh, thank you for that. Let's go ahead and then move on to the next item, which is the request for items to be placed on consent agenda. And uh, we have quite a few items here on the consent agenda. We have item one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Can that be right? I guess it would be. Uh, so I guess we can take three off of that. And so let me just clarify items one, two, four, five, six, and seven. So the item one is standardized report of the city boards and commissions, uh, board and commission 2020. Item two is a certified local government annual report 2019-2020. Item four is the Paul and, and Nellie McCoy speculation house Number three, located at 3406 Olive Street. Item five is a Webb Van Horn Rose, uh, Charles Sawyer House, located at 736 Fern Glen. Item six is the Guild Company Richard Wheeler Spec House, number one, located at 3551 Garrison Street. And item seven is the Weston and Frida Hicks Spec House, located at 3576 Granada Avenue. Chair McCullough, for the record, I just want to state that there was no public um, public comment um, submitted prior to the meeting for any of these the items um, proposed for consent. Okay. So, is there anybody that would like to make a motion, or is there any discussion we'd like to have on any of these items? Excuse me, Chair McCullough, this is Lin Deputy City Attorney Lindsay Sebastian. Um, before the board discusses the consent agenda and votes on the consent agenda, can we ask if anyone present during the meeting here um, in the public wants, to, whether if anyone wants to speak on the item, on any items to be placed on the consent agenda? Okay, absolutely. Is there anybody from the public that would like to comment? It looks like Dr. Woods, do you have well, before we before we take your, your comment, Dr. Woods, I'm sorry, but let me just wait for the public uh, to see if 
somebody from the public that would like to speak. And I don't believe we have any speaker slips, right, for any of these? No. Okay, well, this could be a very simple meeting. So let's go ahead and move to Dr. Woods. You had a, you had a comment or question. I can do it really quickly, but I would like to pull uh, item one, the standardized report. Okay, All right. sounds good. Any further discussion? Yeah, uh, board member Coyle. All right, <clears throat> I would like to pull item number two. Okay. Item one and two are pulled. Any others? I have a question about um, item four. I just don't know about the garage being included or not in the designation. Um, I don't oppose it. I just, the report said not to include the garage. So I don't know where the staff uh, stands on that. Hi, Andy, I could speak to that. Um, staff was recommending to include the garage in the designation as it was original to the date of construction of the original building. Thank you for that. Okay, any others or- Chair McCullough, this yeah. is Tim Hutter. I, I'd like to pull item six. Um, and then I also on item seven, I just wanna make what I think is gonna be a clarification in the resolution and also in the report it ref reflects uh, an exclusion, I think, relating to the, the detached garage, but it is written as detected garage. And I think we just wanna clean that up. There is a garage there, it has been detected, but I think it's, that's the point yeah. of what we're... I, I apologize for that, uh, Tim Hutter. Yes, it is meant to be detached, not detected. Good, and I apologize for not seeing it before 10 minutes ago, <laughs> brought it to your attention. Well, you caught it. That's all that matters. Okay, so we're, we've now pulled one, two, and six. Any others? And or is there somebody that's willing to make a motion on placing? Let's see. That would leave us with four, five, and seven on the consent agenda. Chair McCullough, um, just we're going the the vote because this is still a new process for all of us is going to be on um, you know the approval of the entire agenda. So I would also recommend, you know, just determining the order in which you want to take the items that are pulled and whether they're going to go before. Oh, wait, do we not have any? We don't have any more discussion items. So also when you're voting, you're going to be voting on the order of the items just to, to make sure everyone is okay, aware of that. I would just ask that, I mean, I think that's, if somebody's willing to make a motion that uh, the motion include the order. Yeah. Uh, Chair McCullough, I'll, I'll move. I, I think it was all items uh, except one, two, and seven. And then I would move that we do this in numerical order if that's simple enough. I believe it was item six, right? I'm sorry. Mr. Yes, Carter? Correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yes. We're, gonna, we're gonna hear one, two, and six, correct? Yes. Okay, so, um, so thank you for that. So the things left, the items left on consent would be four and five and seven. Yes. Okay, and so that was a motion, right? Correct. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Okay, and uh, is there a second on that? I'll second. Okay, was that Mr. Bone, the second? Nope. Um, oh, Mr. Winter. Oh, Mr. Winter. Okay, thank you, Mr. Winter. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, I'm gonna call the vote then. On this, starting with board member Winter. Yes. Board member Coyle. Yes. Board member Bowen. Uh, Mr. Bowen, you're on mute, I believe. I support that. And also, the order should be in numerical order. OK, thank you. Uh, board member Cordelion. Yes. Board Member Harleman? Yes. Board Member Pittman? Yes. Board Member Stankowski? Yes. Board Member Winter? Yes, again. Board Member Woods? Yes. Okay, that's a yes for me, that's unanimous. I believe we missed Mr. Hutter's vote. 
oh, how did we do that? Mr. Hunter? <laughs> but Matt got to vote twice. <laughs> Matt, yeah, Matt voted twice. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, I, it. I'm also in favor, so no change <laughs> to the notes. All right. So that, that is, it's still a year. <laughs> all right. So uh, perfect. Then are there anybody from the public that uh, has an item on consent, so that would be four, five, and seven that would like to speak on behalf of their item right now. For their house. Yes, uh, Mr. Quick. Uh, hi, uh, we just wanna say thank you to the board and the staff um, for all the work you guys do. We are the owners of the, uh, Item number five, the 736 Fern Glen, and we uh, look forward to taking care of this uh, historic resource. So thank you uh, all for your service. Thank you. Okay, any others? Uh, it looks like Miss Delio, is she, I see her hand up right now. Ms. Delio, are you on the call? Yes, yes we okay. are here. Hi. Uh, this is Susan Delio and Jeff Goldberg. We are the owners of 3406 Olive Street. And we just wanted to say thank you as well to the board um, for consideration of our house. We love it. And we're very excited to keep it in its current and awesome historical state. So thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Brian. You to unmute yourself. Mr. Brian? I'm sorry for that uh, mute button failure there. It's uh, Brandon Bryan here, the owner of uh, 3576 uh, Granada. And I too would like to thank uh, the, the, the board and the staff members for all of your work and uh, guidance through this process. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So uh, that concludes the consent agenda items. Let's go ahead and then move on to uh, our first item today, which is gonna be item number one, the standardized report of the city boards and commissions 2020. And it looks like Mr. Daly, are you the one that's giving the report on this? Yes, I am. Okay, please do. Thank you, Chair McCullough. And good afternoon, uh, board members. I'm Tim Daly, Assistant Deputy Director of Development Service Department. And this is an item that was continued from your uh, January 28th uh, meeting, uh, which is regards to the standardized report uh, of the uh, city boards and commissions. Um, after that meeting, or during that meeting on January the 28th, uh, it was directed to go ahead and meet with the uh, policy subcommittee. Uh, we met with the policy subcommittee on February 8th and, and also March 8th to do the discussion. Uh, and so the item, we did do some discussion during the policy subcommittee uh, and trying to collectively gather all the comments. Um, it was uh, determined that uh, it'd be best to bring it back to the, the full board to take a look at all the uh, comments made by the uh, board members and to go ahead and uh, solidify the uh, document so that we can go ahead and provide the document to the Office of Boards and Commissions uh, by our deadline of uh, May the 1st. So uh, what has been provided to you today uh, is a combination of all the, or my best attempt to get all the combination of all the comments that were received via email or even discussed during the policy or the previous uh, uh, board meeting uh, to consolidate it and put it into one document. And therefore that the board members today could go ahead and uh, whether they want to make changes, strike out or remove them, uh, can do that today and then we can complete this process. Uh, that's my report. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna open it for public testimony right now. So is there anybody from the public that would like to speak on behalf of this item? This is item number one on our agenda. The standardized report of the city boards and commission 2020. Okay. Just gonna give it a second here. So my hands go up. Okay, seeing none, I'm gonna close the public testimony and we'll open it back up for board discussion. So I believe 
uh, well, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember which one of our board members wanted to pull the item, was it? It was me. Miss Woods, okay, Dr. Woods, thank you. Okay. So do you want to start with uh, comments on this? Mine, yes. Yeah. Um, on page six, under concerns and suggestions, I would like everyone's forbearance, I would like to strike my comments. Um, I asked, actually, I asked to withdraw these earlier, and um, they actually were not in the draft that we discussed at the policy subcommittee, and it's like a zombie, it keeps coming back from the dead, and here they are again. Um, I wrote these comments um, basically out of frustration with consultant reports for um, involuntary designations. And I felt as though we were getting inadequate um, reports from the consultants. It seemed like they always lacked historical photos and they were in kind of, oops, they, anyway, um, they seemed incomplete. They seemed manipulative. And so I was kind of frustrated and I just expressed myself extremely poorly. And I think I managed to basically insult all of the consultant community, many of whom are so honest and have so much integrity. And so um, and just, I will say when I was, when I wrote these comments, I was in the midst of grading 250 undergraduate papers. And so I was, really rushed and also very short tempered. And so <laughs> I express myself very badly. And so I would just like to strike those comments if that's okay with everyone else. I see no problem with that. Mr. Daly, did you? There, there's no problem. I can go ahead and strike out all those comments by uh, uh, board member Woods. Okay, are there any further comments or questions I, rather than kind of go to, around the room here. Uh, yes, Ms. Coyle. Yeah, um, I don't think that Dr. Woods has to apologize, you know, for anything. Um, I think that there is an overall lack of clarity um, on this particular section of this report. Um, and I think that we were paying for any thoughts we might have, but in prior years, it was just aggregated in some way. And then it went to committee. I was there for the one policy committee meeting. I couldn't make it for the second one. Um, so I was really surprised when I saw this version that now is like a, you know, it's kind of a combo platter with individual comments and then group comments, but I'm not even sure what board members mean because there's some duplication between the individual and the board and it's unclear as to how many board members do you need to have for it to be a board member comment versus it versus an individual comment. Um, if Dr. Woods wants to take hers out, well, that's fine, but I still think we lack clarity on what this is supposed to look like and how it's going to be compiled. I'm still not comfortable with this um, format at all. Um, or the direction on what we're supposed to do and how it got put together. I don't understand um, it at all. And I, you know, and, and I certainly don't agree with the last bullet if that's going to be attributed to me as a board member. So I'm not quite sure how to go about doing this. When I asked for it to go back to policy, I thought that this would all be ironed out in policy and we wouldn't have to be taking our time at the board level on this, but here we are, and I'm at a loss to figure out how to resolve it. Yeah, so I Ms. Cole, I, I, fellow board members, thank you. I can respond. I was at both those meetings, as was, I think, Mr. Hutter, and uh, I think um, the what I recall was we kind of went back and forth in the second meeting on you know how we should resolve this. I think at the end of the day, Mr. Hutter had some concerns about pulling it all together because it's, it's sort of our way of silencing individual members of the board. We didn't feel like that was a fair thing to do. And uh, Mr. Hutter, maybe you can comment on it. You, you're the one that had the specific uh, comment, which I agreed with you at the time. Uh, and I thought we had come up with a solution that I thought would you know work for everybody, but 
maybe maybe not. So maybe we need to have a, a, a board discussion about this. Unfortunately, I wish we could have resolved the policy level. It looks like we didn't. Yeah, I, I, um, I actually agree with Dr. Woods and, and Ms. Coyle um, and you, David. I, I, I'm not sure that, and maybe it was confusing because it was a long discussion, but I'm not sure that what we discussed or even you know thought we resolved at the policy committee meeting is what is presented here. Um, and I think that you know it, it's partially, as, as Mr. Daly said, an effort to kind of find places where there were there might have been agreement, or we thought that certain sentiments were shared by a, a set of board members. Um, when you know now we have names attached to each of these comments, um, and I think that there is you know some overlap, obviously between the comments. I think there's concerns about the status of our board um, and about the status of our staff and trying to make sure that we fill the board in the right way and we have, have enough resources to conduct our business. Um, I, I realize that you know, there are other comments on here that I think that um, not everyone stands behind the individual comments and, and the folk areas of focus. So um, I think that it, it was a tough job that we gave to Mr. Daly, so I don't blame you, but I also don't think that it quite got to where we thought it might. And um, so, my, my suggestion, at least for the board, would be um, just striking, uh, along with Dr. Wood's comments, uh, again, I have, I have no objection to her withdrawing those comments and, and agree, as you said, David, that um, it's up to her and, and her prerogative. But I would say that um, otherwise, basically from the bullet point from Dr. Woods down, that we would just strike those and leave the individual comments. Um, they're attributed to individual board members now um, and I do think that in terms of guidance for the Office of Boards and Commissions, um, you know, I, I think not only to this board, but for other boards who have to fill out similar surveys, there needs to be really clear guidance about what we're doing with this section um, to avoid this kind of uncertainty. Because when we get polled, and I, again, I think it's, it was handled differently this year than it had in the past. And that's, again, not, a, a, not to anyone's... Um, not anyone's fault, right? Different people would handle this section in a different way if there's no guidance. But I think there does need to be clear guidance, both to staff and to the board members, whomever you're, you're polling, so that we understand what's happening with our comments. So my suggestion would be cutting the, from, from Dr. Wood's comment on down, um, it would, so the, the document would end with Ms. Dankowski's um, comment and we would leave it that way, but I'm yeah, open to- it's, it's kind of coming back to me now. What I recall was that the, there was, I think, three comments that were relatively controversial and not all board members felt that they were, um, that we would unanimously support those comments. However, uh, in sort of the process, those three comments had been pulled by the individual board members, leaving us with, the, with comments left that we felt were pretty much universally sort of you know, nobody really had an issue with. So at that point, the conversation went to, well, let's just go ahead and move forward with the comments that, that seem to be less controversial and, and, um, and remove the ones that have been removed by the board members that were controversial. Uh, it sounds like, Ms. Uh, Dr. Woods, your comments, I'm not really sure how they got, they got inserted back in there. That might've just been a, a mistake somehow. I, I don't know, uh, Mr. Daly, do you, wasn't that one of the comments that, that we talked about removing because it was a board member that had um, uh, that had pulled this that, that particular comment. Yeah, in our last discussion about the, in the policy subcommittee, uh, obviously uh, people were saying that, well, we couldn't uh, vote on somebody else's item because it may be important to them. Not all the board members were there. So therefore we compiled all the comments that were received. That way when uh, today at today's meeting, you can go ahead and, and indicate which ones you want to go ahead and Thank use, you. which ones you don't okay. want to go ahead and utilize in your, okay. in your uh, comments. So I, I think then, thank you for the reminder. And so then I think with that, Mr. Hutter, I think what you've just done is potentially made a, a motion that we could, um, if, you're, if you're okay with that, that, maybe that's the motion that we strike the, um, those up until Dr. Woods, or strike Dr. Woods on. And, um, and then if, there's a board member that made one of those motions that feels that we shouldn't strike that. They're, they're, they still would like to have that suggestion heard, then I think we would have that discussion. I'm fine with that becoming a motion, sure. 
Okay, thank you. And is there anybody that would be interested in seconding that so we could continue? I'll, I'll second it, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, Ms. Cole. My additional comment on that, though, would be the role of public testimony. When this came before us, we had public testimony um, from at least one member of the public, Mr. Kaminsky, and I thought his comments were um, appropriate. But then I think there was some direction later from staff saying that we're not supposed to incorporate public testimony in any way into board recommendations. So again, I think this gets to the overarching theme of this item, which is there needs to be more direction about what this section is looking for and direction to boards and commissions on how to set this up for success um, so that we can be efficient in dealing with it. Um, there's just one other, uh, there's a typo on page four to close the quote correctly after the word board. Um, otherwise, um, I support Mr. Hutter's motion. Uh, board member Coyle, I got your email and I did make that correction to it, uh, to the actual Thank document, so. Thank you. It's not part of the motion then, it will be done. <laughs> Can I make one other comment? Yes, please. Um, on, uh, Page five, the word cancellations is misspelled. It's two L's in the, in the okay. heading. But otherwise I support um, Mr. Hutter's recommendation. Okay. Mr. Bowen, I'll make that change. I see it now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any further comments or suggestions? And to recall, I just I just want to state since this is being recorded, I, I I'm glad that uh, board member Coyle pulled this. Um, I just want to say, uh, you know, I, I thought there were some pretty legitimate concerns about this when it came the first time, and I I I understand kind of what everybody's saying on the call, kind of across the board. Um, but I also want to say, you know, we got we got this document um, on Monday uh, amongst over twelve emails that had up to 15 plus pages in them. So I'm, I'm just gonna state for the record, I didn't read that until it was just brought up now. It, there was a tremendous amount of information that's been given to this board up until 11 a.m. today. So I, I you know, I, my, my, I'm actually, I, th I think I'm gonna vote opposed on this just because I haven't read it. Um, and I, I also have some concerns, just something is being put forward as a motion of this group as a whole. And I, I appreciate that we're kind of parsing out individual board members and I'm not um, everybody, you know, I think those are all valid suggestions. I just don't know that I'm super comfortable with how this is being packaged. It's more of a procedural thing. So uh, Mr. Taylor, I'm not trying to make your job harder, but I, I just, uh, it this just doesn't feel quite right to me. Okay. All right. Uh, any, any other comments? Yes, Ms. Kowal. Yeah, and I, I have one final request, if I could, would be to consolidate my three into one. It seemed that the other other individuals had multiple in one and mine was pulled out into three. Maybe that's the way that I organized it when I sent it to staff. Um, but if we're looking for conformity, just group my three together if you can. Thank you. Not a problem. Okay. Any further discussion? Is there any chance of seeing the photos that are indicated for inclusion? Or, oh, I'm sorry, that's a, oh yeah, page eight, I think. It mentions photos. Or, are you suggesting they share the photos on the screen here right now? I, I don't know if that's it, possible. It's but possible. I, I was wondering the same thing, Mr. Bowen. Yep, so I just, if I think. Yeah. If I recall in the past, they were literally photos of us sitting in the uh, Civic San Diego boardroom um, looking at our screens. So, um, but it, it may be different this time. The same I, you know, I believe the, uh, the first uh, report on January the 28th had the links to it. If they're not linked, I could go ahead and pull them up if you need to. But they, yes, they were basically of uh, the virtual meetings that have been conducted um, and those are the photos of the Zoom meetings themselves and utilizing whether Zoom or Microsoft Teams. Yeah, I couldn't get the link to work so I, I haven't seen them. 
I need to make sure I look good. <laughs> yes, Ms. Stankowski. Well, I firmly stand by my suggestion, but honestly, when we were asked to make suggestions, I expected there to be some kind of response or, or that they would be addressed in some way instead of, you know, just a bitch list. And so I was kind of disappointed that there wasn't anything in response. Well, they're still, they're not, they haven't gone anywhere yet, but I guess the question would be at some point, would there be a response? Probably not, but I don't know. Mr. Bailey? You know, I, I don't, um, if, if the list is uh, obviously it's, it's your board. Um, and so these are your comments as the board members and we're just passing them on to the city council or to the office of boards commissions of your concerns on how you run your board meeting or uh, it, ways to go ahead and effectively manage the board meeting. Um, so these are your comments. Uh, city staff is, it is not going to go ahead and respond to your comments. These are your issues and that all we're doing is we're presenting them uh, as, as presented to us, to the Office of Boards and Commissions and obviously to the City Council. Chair McCullough, Ms. Santos has pulled up those pictures if um, the board members want to view them. Okay, yeah, several people suggested that. So why don't we, why don't we pull them up? I object. <laughs> uh, oh my God, these are horrible. <laughs> okay, thank you. Hey, I thought they were great. You guys look beautiful. So any, uh, any further discussion on this? We have a uh, for, the, for the benefit of the audio record or a stenographer later on in life, uh, I, I withdraw my objection. I was kidding. Okay. All right. So I'll go ahead and no further discussion. I'm going to call the vote. Board member Hutter? Aye. Board member Coyle? Aye. Board member Bowen? Aye. Board member Cordelion? Aye. Board member Harleman? Aye. Board member Pittman? Nay. Board member Stankowski? Aye. Board member Winter? Aye. Board member Woods? Aye. It's yes for me, so that's uh, um, all in favor with the exception of Mr. Pittman. Okay, so. I would like to thank all the board members uh, for your patience on this one. Uh, obviously, it's the comments that uh, you provide, and we want to go ahead and make sure that the city council members and the Office of Boards Commissions understands your concerns. Uh, so I, I do appreciate all your patience. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah, thank you, Mr. Daly, for your time. Okay, moving on to item number two. Um, Mr. Chair, it'd be great if next year there could be more dynamic interpretation of what we actually do i don't know what that looks like but you know i that would you know i, I think maybe there, there must be another way to capture that besides just those images so just something else to think about in the next eight to ten months how to how to build a better mousetrap there okay yeah thank you that's a good point so, uh, okay, moving on to item number two, this is a certified local government annual report 2019-2020. And there, is there a staff report, Ms. Seeger? Um, yes, there is. We have a presentation, a brief presentation provided. Yeah.
Good afternoon, everyone. This item is being brought before the Historical Resources Board in conjunction with the City Certified Local Government Responsibilities, CLG Responsibilities. The annual report for 2020 also satisfies the requirement for an annual report to be transmitted from the HRB to the Mayor and City Council in accordance with the Land Development Code. The, an the annual report summarizes the work of the board and staffs and staff during the state's fiscal year, October 1st, 2019 through September 30th, 2020. During this reporting period, HRB activity has remained largely consistent with the designation of 40 individual properties. This year saw, saw a record high um, number of Mills Act, in, Mills Act enrollment with 160 new contracts completed during this period. The physical closure of the Development Services Department due to COVID caused significant challenges to staff. However, the number of project reviews de decreased only slightly with a total of 3,563 reviews completed during the reporting period compared to 3,719 in the previous reporting years. The most critical preservation planning issue facing the city continues to be the renewed development pressure on historic and potentially historic resources. Staff continues to see an increase in applications impacting potentially historic and designated resources. The most successful incentive program continues to be the Mills Act. Our single greatest accomplishment during the reporting period was the successful processing of a record high number of Mills Act contracts. Um, can, Sheila, can you please flip to the next one? Thank you. Um, these are the goals identified for the 2019 to 2020 reporting period. Um, and this concludes staff's report. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And so I'm going to open it for public discussion. If there's anybody in the public on the call or online right now, please raise your hand and give you three minutes. Wait a second. Okay, seeing none, we'll close the pub public testimony and we'll move on to board discussion and Again, if somebody could remind me who the board member was that uh, the poll that maybe we'll go straight to them. It was I, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay, Ms. Quo, please. Um, I sent these um, uh, edits already to staff, to Ms. C Seeger to look at. Um, you know, on page seven, um, I wanted, I, I asked that Anne be put into my name and that my appointment date um, be the same as my classmates, 719, if that's correct. Um, Suzanne, did you have a chance to look at that? I didn't look into it, but I'll, I'll confirm. Okay, because I think we were all at the same time for that group, so I think that might be a typo. Um, and my other uh, comment was on page eight, whether HRB liaison should follow your name and, your name and title, Suzanne. I'll take it, yes, if, you, if everyone agrees. Well, I don't know if I to, to, to give you a raise, but it seemed that you were possibly <laughs> operating in that capacity during that time period. And, and the record should be clear that our liaison, I guess, didn't drop, that you were that person. Thank you. So, um, on page 17, item A, uh, I think you also just mentioned it in your staff report regarding certain development pressures. Um, I thought it might be informative for you to mention if there were any trends or particular places or resource types or neighborhoods that have been at this increased risk that you identified. Um, is there a way to add that kind of data into it? You, you would like it added into the report? Let me see. Um, yeah. It just kind of begs the question and might help us for tracking and understanding the trends you're seeing, um, if if there are in fact places or areas or resources that seem to be most at risk, yeah, um, I can certainly staff can certainly add that um, into the report. Um, unfortunately, we don't have the luxury for this to come back to um, the HRB for a review because um, it needs to be in by the end of the month to to the SHPO. But um, I can tell you what will be put into into the report. Um, we're seeing um, the most development pressure um, in the downtown core, um, Little Italy, where you, there are um, the older areas of the city where there are already designated historic districts or properties that are potentially historic um, and, you know, they are under development pressure. And that's where we're seeing the majority of our site development permits. Um, we're also seeing 
through the over 45 review, um, development pressure in areas such as North Park, where the areas have been up zoned. So, but there are also areas that contain a lot of historic resources. So, so those that area has been those areas have been identified as the ones under the most most development pressure. I would say right now. I think that that's. Um important and good information. And since we have it, that we should add it to the report. Sure. Um, on page 19, item number six, I don't know really what it means or where it comes from. Um, it says work with developers and property owners to increase the number of housing units on potentially historic and individually designated parcels, as well as, when, as, well as within historic districts while still maintaining consistency with the Secretary of Interior standards. Um, I guess that's the first time I'm kind of hearing it in this report. I'm wondering what it, what it means and why it's here. Sure, um, this was actually in the last report as well. Um, so it was something that we were seeing last year. We, um, California is in a housing crisis. So that is something that we're, staff is seeing, you know, the biggest pressure from um, in terms of you know, the, the direction that we're getting from, from our um, management here. So our goal is to work with these property owners in order to increase housing units, but still maintain the historical resources um, consistent with the standards. So kind of trying to compromise with property owners and developers in order to, to meet both the historic resources, the historic preservation goals of the city, as well as housing. I, I can see where, where, and advising on the standards and consistency is within our purview, but I, but is increasing the number of housing units, is that something that we're charged with or staff is? I'm just confused as to the wording of that. We could change the wording so it doesn't appear that historical resources staff is working to increase the number of housing units. Right, because when I, when I read that, that's kind of what it says, and I was wondering if that's really what we're charged with doing or not. We can change it to maybe something that's along the lines of in response to the housing crisis. So it's not specifically saying increase the number of units. Okay. Thank you. And my last comment was also on 19, it's just a typo, that property should be properties, plural. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Those are my comments and questions. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion or comments or questions? Item two. I had one um, on page seven. There's a place where um, it, it indicates properties that have been de-designated. And I don't know, um, there was 345th Avenue, which was mentioned in the page prior as a de-designated, uh, something the city council uh, rescinded a designation. So I wondered why that wasn't on page seven. The reporting period for this CLG report is um, October 1st, 2019 to September 30th, 2020. That designation um, was appealed and granted. A, the appeal was granted by city council in November of 2020. So it's not within the reporting period. So it'll be in next year's report. Um, however, I, we did indicate um, on the list of designated properties that it was appealed and the appeal was granted by city council. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? Anybody interested in making a motion? Ms. Cole, you seem to ha have had the, the largest uh, amount of comments on that item. You wanna... I will go ahead and, and I will move item two as revised. Okay, thank you. Any seconds? Second that. Thank you, Ms. Pittman. Any further discussion? Okay, I'll call the vote. Board Member Hutter? Aye. Board Member Coyle? Aye. Board Member Bowen? Aye. Board Member Corleone? Aye. Board Member Harleman? Aye. Board Member Pittman? Aye. Board Member Stankowski? Aye. Board Member Woods or Winter? 
Uh, yes. Board Member Woods? Aye. Let's just remove this unanimous. Okay, thank you. Why don't we take a just a um, a five minute break and then we'll hear our last item. So it is uh, 2.06, we'll say, we'll come back or 2.07, we'll come back and re-adjourn at 2.12.
Okay, is everybody back at their desks? So it's uh, 2000 or 2012, it's uh, 2 12 p.m. I'd like to call the meeting back order. And so you see everybody kind of back at their desk here. Move on to our last item. Just gonna wait for a minute or two for our staff. There we go. Okay, welcome back everybody. Let's go ahead and move on. I believe it was item seven that we still need to hear. Is that correct? Did I get that right? Yes. Okay. All right. Sounds good. So item seven, the Weston in uh, Freda Hicks spec house and uh, giving the staff report is Ms. Basic. Are you available, Ms. Basic? Oh, no, it's I, Suzanne Seeger is hearing the staff report. For oh, okay. All right. No, we're doing item, item six. Ah, uh, item six. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> I see Mr. Wallace giving me that. He's, he's, he's ready to go. <laughs> yeah, he's ready to go, I can tell. All right, so the Guild Company Richard Wheeler Spec House number one, item number six, and uh, yes, Ms. Seeger. If you're ready, I, I see you're uh, probably catch it a bad time here, but um, whenever you're ready, take your time. Give me one second, I'm working on the presentation. No problem. The property located at 3551 Garrison Street is being brought before the Historical Resources Board in conjunction with the owner's desire to have the site designated as a historical resource. The historical Resource Research Report was prepared, which concludes that the resource is significant under HRB criteria C and D and staff concurs. Okay. Subject resource is a one-story single family residence with an attached garage on a hillside lot in Point Loma. The house constructed in 1955 was designed by proposed master architect Richard George Wheeler in the custom ranch style. The house exhibits a wide street facade with a projecting bay at the center, large expanses of window and a prominent brick chimney. Exterior cladding includes stucco and vertical siding, and the resource features a low pitched roof with a wide eave overhang. Fenestration includes fixed and sliding wood and steel windows, as well as large sliding glass doors. Several modifications have been made to the property since its 1955 date of construction. Additions were constructed in 1957 and 1976. In 2005, the wood roof was replaced with composite shingle. Additionally, the current property owners recently removed a wooden deck over the original concrete patio and reconstructed the low site wall at the front of the house. These modifications do not impair integrity of design materials, workmanship, or feeling as it relates to Criterion C. Next slide. The house continues to convey the historic significance of the custom ranch style and retains integrity from its 1955 period of its significance. Therefore, staff recommends designation of the property under HRB Criterion C. The subject resource was designed by proposed master architect Richard Wheeler. The house is representative of Wheeler's residential work in the custom ranch style. Therefore, staff recommends designation under HRB Criterion D. And this concludes staff's report. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to go and open it to public testimony. Um, and it looks like, is there a prepared presentation, Mr. Wallace? No, but I'm happy to answer any questions that, that Mr. Hutter has about the report or the house. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Uh, is there anybody else from the public that would like to speak on behalf of this item? 
We received no public testimony, um, public comment um, prior to the hearing. Okay, thank you. I don't see any hands going up. So I will then close public testimony and why don't we just go straight to you, Mr. Hutter. And uh, do you wanna go over your reason for pulling the item? Sure, um, I think uh, we've had a lot of discussion, especially at recent meetings about how do we designate masters and what does it mean to be a master builder, master architect in the city? Um, and frankly, I still think that it's a little bit uh, murky in terms of what qualifies you and, and what we consider and what are the um, designation qualifications. So I just wanted to kind of pull it for discussion. I, I may very well still vote in favor of it, but um, Mr. Wallace, I think it would be helpful, at least for me, um, I guess my concern um, is not necessarily with the, the prolific nature of Mr. Wheeler's um, career uh, or the buildings that are identified either in your report or in the staff report as being um, representative of his work or his office's work, but um, it just wasn't clear to me that I saw a lot that indicated that this custom ranch home is really connected to, to the rest of his work in such a way that this would be a notable work of his. Um, and, and, you know, especially as we select someone and identify them as being a master, um, I would want, I think the you know, for it to be the first item to be identified of a master and, and the, the resource where we, where we do select someone, identify them as a master to be representative of their, the rest of their work. So um, I don't claim to be an expert on this stuff. And so that's the reason for my um, question, but I would appreciate your input on, on his work and how this kind of fits into that context. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So the reason why this, this example of his work is, is significant is he was getting out of architecture school right at, at the time of, of Pearl Harbor. He got out his, his, he worked for his father's firm for a few years. Um, and he really started his career in the early 50s. There was a brief period of time where he built um, residential homes um, before he went on to build larger, more complicated commercial structures. So you can see in, in the report, there's, there's quite a few um, great examples of his of his um, commercial structures that you'll see in Point Loma and other areas that he was building um, in, in the late 50s and 1960s. So this work is, is one of, uh, uh, of a brief period of his career when he was building um, residential homes um, during that, uh, that early to mid 50s period um, and, and is therefore rare and, and, and notable um, for, for that. Um, there's just a few houses that we've been able to identify that were that were built by him before he uh, he, he he got to, to bigger projects and, and more commercial structures. Um, so uh, so that would be um, that would be my response. I can go into it more if if you'd like about the the architectural details, but but just in a general way, um, it, it's. Uh, it's a, a brief period of time when he was building these uh, these residential structures from the the, the early to, to mid fifties. That's that's helpful to me. I, I I'd also um, appreciate input if if other folks on the board have thoughts. Um, Todd, I don't want to put you on the spot or Matt, but if you guys have thoughts about Wheeler and, and his influence and and kind of how this fits, um, that's. That's my my kind of hang up with that particular piece of the of the recommendation. Okay. Yeah, I think it was uh, you feel like your question was answered well adequately. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you, Kyle. Okay. okay. Uh, Mr. Pittman, it looks like do you have something you want to say? I, I mean, I, I just want since Tim asked, uh, I, I I mean I, I think the thing that I I was actually a little surprised that Wheeler's not already a master. I know he's um He's listed in our modernism context statement. I'm pretty familiar with more, his more commercial work, which I, I think Kylie's pointed that out. Um, as far as how that fits into his career, I'm going to leave that to Kylie. And I think, you know, I mean, just in a very general way, um, I, I think there's probably a rarity to his residential commissions, although I, I don't know that. Maybe Kylie, I, I don't know if you can provide a little bit more information on that. I know it's early. And again, most of the stuff I know by him is. A little later, it's more uh, early '60s, probably on the front end. Um, 
but uh, you know I, I also kind of add, well, he's kind of like, he's kind of like a Point Loma guy. Like that's his yeah. kind of, you know, <laughs> and then this just fits into that pile of stuff, you know. Uh, he just had a lot of, a lot of things over there. So. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, not, certainly not the same time period or whatever, but. Uh. Yeah. I mean, from an, ev from an evolution of his design standpoint, I would say that's a more traditional conservative looking home is opposed to what you would see from him later in his career. But to me, that's actually part of the story. It's always interesting to see how these guys kind of started and how they got there. And if you have something that's relatively intact that can kind of speak to that physically, to me, that's kind of what we're here for. So I, 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 I support it. Um, but Tim, I, I think that's a really good question. I, I actually appreciate you asking it as well. Okay. Any other? Comments? Discussion? I had a question uh, going back to Board Member Hutter about, uh, I think he mentioned a question about the, the uh, wording of the resolution and uh, were you thinking that the description of what was excluded was not clear in the resolution or I just wonder if you could elaborate on that. No, I, I think what you're referencing was a comment about um, item seven on the agenda, which was just a clarification on the wording in that resolution. So it, it was not related to this item. Okay. Well, if there are no further, Ms. Quell, were you about to say something? I was just getting ready to make a motion to move the staff oh. recommendation. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So uh, thank you, Ms. Coyle. Any, anybody interested in seconding that? Motion? I'll second that. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Corleone. Any further discussion? I see none. Call the vote. Starting with Board Member Hutter? Aye. Board Member Coyle? Aye. Board Member Bowen? Aye. Board Member Corleone? Aye. Board Member Harleman? Aye. Board Member Pittman? Aye. Board Member Sankowski? Aye. Board Member Winter? Yes. Board Member Woods? Aye. And I'll vote yes, so that polls unanimous. So thank you. Is the owner of uh, the Guild Company Richard Wheeler Spec House Number One on the call? And would you like to say a word or two? Uh, hello. Yes. Oh, sorry. We're not. We've never really zoomed before. That's okay. <laughs> So thank you so much for your consent. We love this house and we'll take care, good care of it. And I hope people enjoy it as they drive up and down Garrison Street. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. And my thank daughter, and my daughter who's uh, 16, loved the flowers in front. They were all in bloom <laughs> up on your slope and she thought that was fantastic, so. Oh. <laughs> they stop and take pictures. People put their kids and stuff in front of the yards and take pictures. Yeah. So it's yeah. a good time of year right now. Thank you. It really is. Well, thank you. So that uh, that concludes our board meeting. Uh, it's, uh, let's see, what, 226 right now. Thank you, everybody. The next board meeting is going to be Thursday, May 27th, 2021. It's going to be another virtual hearing. So again, thank you very much. And I'm going to adjourn our meeting at 226. Thank you and have a great rest of your week. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you.